Basically, the natural world is being hit by what I call the big three. Certainly, climate change is up there. Habitat destruction by humans is absolutely key, and we're also adding pollution to the ecosystem. Sounds pretty grim, and it is grim. Scientists say that our changing climate is impacting the way that some species will evolve, but it's also affecting how humans are living right now. I spoke with Jeff Berardelli about the dire situation Earth is facing. So Jeff, how much of an impact would you say this is having on natural habitats? Very big impact, especially coral reefs. I mean, in the Florida Keys, people will tell you uh, that around 90% of the coral reef growth that we had just 30 or 40 years ago is gone, 90%. We know about the barrier reef in Australia. That's been a disaster. So much of it is gone now. Uh, not only that, but polar bear habitat. Uh, ice is, is melting at an extremely rapid rate. And by 2050, scientists say that we could lose about 66% of polar bears. And then add to that the human impact. Uh, Lyme disease is spreading like crazy in the northeastern United States. Mosquitoes are able to go further, and because of that, they're spreading more disease. So it's not just species, it's the human species as well that's being impacted. Jeff, how big of a difference would you say we've seen in sea level and climate temperatures? All right, sea level, we've gone up around 10 inches since the 1800s. Doesn't sound like much, but the amount of flooding that we've seen along the eastern seaboard, that's gone up about fourfold since the 1970s. So it has a big impact. As we head into the middle of the century, 2050, we're expecting probably about another foot of sea level rise. So the rate is accelerating. And, you know, it's very uncertain what's going to happen by 2100 because we don't know how unstable Antarctic is going to be. We don't know if there's a tipping point with Greenland. But right now, the average is somewhere around three feet, maybe a little less of sea level rise. That would be fairly catastrophic, especially for people who own property and live along the vulnerable coastline. You know, it's so interesting because I'm from Tampa and I've heard this repeatedly mm -hmm. over and over again. But when you talk about other systems like La Nina, El Nino, mm -hmm. we're seeing more drastic and more frequent uh, occurrences of this. Yeah. Can you explain exactly what's happening here and is that impacting what you're seeing about land going potentially below water? Yeah, so let's talk about El Nino. Uh, El Nino is something that has always happened. And usually it used to happen once every five to seven years. I studied this in high school even. Mm. And I remember five to seven years is when you would expect it. Now El Ninos seem to be happening once every couple of years. Mm. And the strong El Ninos are becoming even stronger. And the reason for that is 93% of the excess heat that's being trapped by CO2, 93% of the man-made heat mm -hmm. goes into the ocean. And it gets stored kind of deep in the ocean. During an El Nino, it gets pulled right back to the surface. It's released into the atmosphere, and it creates all kinds of extreme weather. So El Nino actually causes extreme weather. It also warms the ocean waters. That reduces the amount of nutrients in the water, so on and so forth. There are a lot of domino effects. What's your biggest concern, Jeff? I mean, you study this. You look at this. Mm -hmm. We go to you all the time about extreme weather. If there was one thing you could say that you were really concerned about to hit the panic button with, what would that be? I think it's sea level rise. Really? Yeah, because people who have a lot of money, they'll be able to get out. They'll mm -hmm. move to Canada. They'll move, you know, 30 miles inland. Uh, people with lesser means who are more vulnerable, it's going to be very hard for them to adapt. Let's say all you had, all you owned in this world was a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar house, and then the mortgage company says, "I'm not going to issue mortgages on this house anymore. No one can buy your house, and so therefore your hundred or two hundred thousand dollars investment that's gone. Where do you go from there?" I would say sea level rise is probably. Uh, the worst impact, but destabilization of countries. Think mm -hmm. about it. If droughts start getting worse, floods start getting worse, countries that are already on edge are already or become even more on edge. It creates instability. So national security is a big risk. I can go on forever. Mm -hmm. We don't have forever. Yeah. But I would say probably those are two of the big ones. When people think of climate change, I feel like so often they think about the weather the temperatures rising so high that that's really the big impact. But it was interesting. April was actually the coldest mm. month that we've had in a while. So what, what do you explain that the sort of juxtaposition of those two? As a meteorologist, I yeah. would say a little bit on the scary side. And I'll tell you why. Because the Arctic was unbelievably warm this year. We've never seen anything like this before. I mean, several years in a row, the Arctic has just been steamy during the wintertime, relatively speaking. And what's happening is all the cold air is being displaced somewhere else. So it's strange when you talk to people in the United States, they say, what global warming? It's so cold here. 
But it's really the only place that was cold this winter was the United States, mm -hmm. and April was one of the coldest. Uh, it's because the cold air has to go somewhere. The Arctic gets so warm, it pushes the cold air. And by the way, it's also one of the reasons why we had four nor'easters in like three yeah. weeks in the spring. Yeah. Sometimes people look at a crisis mm -hmm. as an opportunity. Yes. Do you see any sort of silver lining in all of this? Uh, undoubtedly. Uh, I am optimistic about this. I always in my personal life like to look at obstacles, uh, impediments as opportunities. I think this is a great one. I mean, for us to move in a sustainable direction will create so many jobs. It's already creating so many jobs. Right now, solar, wind, nuclear, uh, alternative forms of energy, uh, sustainable forms of energy are outnumbering fossil fuels by around three to one. Wow. Almost all investment so far this past quarter in the United States has been in sustainable energy. So many jobs are being created in middle America, places that had lost all of their manufacturing. They're coming back to life. Diners are opening, restaurants are opening, jobs are coming open. Kids that were leaving that, those areas because there were no jobs, they're coming back. Sustainability is going to revive the American economy and uh, we are gonna be exceptional, just like we are right now, we'll be exceptional in the future, but we need to adopt sustainability. Jeff Baradelli, so grateful you've been following this so closely.